Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Bentley and I am a 21 year old model living in New York. I'm like already nervous to make this video and I'm like already sweaty. This is the first time I'm talking about this. First of all, I wanna give a massive trigger warning. This video is about eating disorders, about the encouragement of eating disorders within the modeling industry. I give examples of people saying highly triggering things to me and encouraging eating disorder behavior and demanding me to lose weight. If you were even slightly triggered by this type of language, please do not watch this video right now. It's not worth it. This will be a two part video. I think. This first part, I will be talking about what happened to me. And the second part, I will be talking about how I've been working on recovering from this and dealing with the aftermath and trying to heal my relationship with my body and food. Also, I am not a nutritionist, I am not a dietitian, I am not a professional in any of these fields. So any type of facts or numbers that I put out there during this video are just based off my own research and own experience with other dietitians and nutritionists. Most of you know this, but I have been modeling since I was 10 years old. The agents that I'm about to quote in this video are no longer a part of my life. And I've worked with six agencies and with over seven different agents in these past 11 years. So do not be trying to guess who said what in the comments because I will not be entertaining that. So obviously when I first signed with an agency, I was 10, I was a child and I was the size of a child. I had been underweight my entire life, like literally since the day I was born. <laughs> and I had been actively trying to gain weight, like drinking insurers, taking supplements, doing everything to gain weight up until I was about like 14. That's when I hit puberty and obviously your body changes. At around 15 years old, my agents started talking to me about my hip measurements. And at 16, I was also preparing to do my first season of fashion. I was told that the hip measurement requirement to do runway was 35 inches in circumference. At 16 years old, after going through puberty, my hips were at about a 36 naturally, which in retrospect is insane that all of this happened over one inch in circumference. Like not even an inch on paper, an inch in circumference, one inch. So as I was preparing to go to my first fashion week, these conversations started happening. And keep in mind that I was a varsity athlete for all four years of high school and I played volleyball and swam competitively year round. As these conversations start happening, one of the first things they bring up is I'm a 36 now, but they need me to be a 35 and they know that it's possible because I've been a 34 and a half previously. I was a 34 and a half when I was 13, a prepubescent child. And them telling me, we just know what's possible. That's not possible. That shouldn't be possible. That shouldn't be made to be possible as a 16 year old now. They were just constantly telling me, your body needs more work. You have to work on this. You have to lose an inch. Your body needs more work. So I was assigned a trainer at 16. She immediately explained to me what a calorie was and made me download my fitness pal and set my calories to 1200 a day. She had full access to my fitness pal. She had my username and password, could look at it whenever she wanted and made me track everything I ate. Just for reference, 1200 calories a day is about what a toddler should eat. An active teenage girl who is exercising five days a week rigorously needs between 2200 and 2400 calories a day. I did not know this because at the time I had just been introduced to what a calorie was and I was just going off what this trainer professional was telling me. She would critique my diet at the end of every week. She berated me for any fast food or any sugar, including fruit, but it was successful. And I got down to a 35, I went to fashion week and I walked for Valentino. Fast forward a year and I'm in the same boat. Once again, as I'm going through my teenage years, continuing to go through puberty, my hips went back to their natural size 
of a 36. I was planning to go to Sydney, Australia for a few months right after high school graduation to model, but I was told that I was not going to be allowed to do that if I didn't get back down to a 35. Massive trigger warning for the email that I'm about to show you. Honestly, I could have made this entire video just about this email. Please skip ahead if you are worried you might be triggered by language that encourages eating disorders because that's what I'm about to show you. So please skip ahead if you don't want to see that. Eating is your Achilles heel. Are you fucking kidding me? Everything in this email is pro eating disorder. I was 17 years old. They are literally just trying to drill into me. Food is bad. Food is the enemy. Food is your weakness. They're literally telling me that food is my biggest weakness, my Achilles heel. Eating is not a weakness. Eating is a part of life. Eating literally is life. Cutting out every single processed food and exclusively eating whole foods all the time for a 17 year old, I mean, come on, that's not realistic. And elimination diets should not be practiced on children who are already underweight and also extremely active. Bread has to go, rice has to go, pasta has to go. And again, I am only a professional model. I am not a professional nutritionist. You know that. But at a minimum, teens should consume 130 grams of carbs every day just for basic brain and body function. That is over eight and a half full slices of white bread a day at least. Literally just for your brain and body to function correctly. To tell a teen to completely cut out foods like that is insane. You are insane. If you want to succeed, you have to do this. Like I literally might start crying. Like this is, I can't believe I was spoken to like this. I can't believe it. Do you know how impressionable a teenage girl's mind is, especially about her body? This is just insane language to use when speaking to a teenage girl about her body. You are literally telling me that eating bread will prevent me from being successful. Do you have any idea what type of damage you can do to girls with this type of message? I'm glad that I can like look back now and realize how psychotic and wrong all of this was. But when this was said to me, I believed it. Because who was I to question authority or question the people in charge of my career or question people that had been in the industry for decades? I was a child. Okay, so now fast forward to after I went to Australia. I came back and I was supposed to move directly to New York. I admit I was not eating a healthy diet when I was in Australia. They're super relaxed about measurements over there and honestly, I kind of like rebelled after being told I couldn't eat so many things for so long and I, definitely went overboard and just ate whatever I wanted all the time and like way too much of it. I have a whole other video about getting back into shape after Australia and kind of like what happened when I was over there. So I'm not gonna go into all that in this video. But basically I was not eating right, I was not exercising and my hips were at about like a 37 maybe. But while I was there, I was also working pretty much every single day and I was super successful. I was literally in Vogue magazine three times. So I was kind of like, all right, that rule must be kind of bullshit because I'm doing all this work. But anyway, when I got back to the US, my agents told me that I would not be allowed to move to New York until my hips were back at a 35. They also said I could not even be submitted for any jobs or opportunities at all. Like literally didn't even have a chance to work until I was 35. It got to the point where they asked me to lose half an inch in one week. The only way to do that that quickly is to not eat. They basically told me the rules are the rules, get it through your thick skull. At this point, I developed a severe eating disorder. I'm honestly surprised it took this long given how I had been spoken to for three years. I was being praised for losing weight quickly and pushed to lose even more, even faster. I had a horrible relationship with food and was terrified of anything slightly processed or anything with sugar. I had zero emotions. I lost my period. I was constantly bruised everywhere. I had severe chest pains. I would be constipated for 
up to a week at a time. My lips were purple. I was constantly freezing. My hair was falling out and literally just all the other classic symptoms of a severe eating disorder. And all I was told was to go harder and lose more and do it faster. Also, this is not even close to all the comments that were made to me about my body. I was literally just like skimming through emails and texts to find these messages because even like rereading all of it now was still triggering to me. So these are literally just the few I came across out of many. Anyway, like I said, I am no longer involved with any of the people who spoke to me like this. And when I gave one of them feedback about why I no longer wanted to be involved with them and told them how I was treated was wrong. They denied everything and stood by their classic saying that I've been hearing for years, we don't make the rules. And they also said that I needed to take accountability for my career. I needed to take accountability, me, me taking accountability, not them. Anyway, times have changed. Get out of the dark ages. Girls do not need to starve for this shit. And I know that now because I found an agency who takes me exactly as I am and I'm working more now than I ever have before. <laughs> so let me tell you how this can be different. I was actually interviewing with agencies recently. In these interviews, I actually found my voice and stood my ground for the first time in my life. I really felt like I was coming into my own, going from being a child in the industry to now being an adult. And I was leading the conversation for the first time. I had never led a conversation with agents in my entire career. It was always my agents telling me like what I needed to do or what the plan was. And also my parents kind of speaking for me because I was a kid. So I recently had these conversations with agencies where I literally walked in the door, laid it all out and was like, hey, this is me. This is my size. This is how I feel healthy. This is my body. I will not get smaller. Do you think that you can work with me? And can you find me clients who will take me as I am? And almost all of them immediately like commended me for my outlook on my health and my career and literally told me how impressed they were with it. And almost all of them also assured me that there is a tremendous amount of work for me. And honestly, maybe I can't walk down all those high fashion runways again. And maybe some clients still are really strict about the 35 inch rule, but there are plenty of jobs for me. There are plenty of people who will book me. Runway is a tiny sliver of the fashion industry. There are so many other options. And I wish that had been discussed with me and my family rather than forcing me to fit in this frame that I didn't fit in. Like I wish they would have told me and my family that runway was not the only way to go because that would have taken the pressure off of me to achieve these dangerous goals of losing weight like that as a child who was also already underweight. Like I just, it's so crazy to me. Runway and high fashion was the only option ever given to me. Like now I'm with this other agency and there's literally all the options, like all the other options that I didn't even know existed or I could do. What I think needs to happen is I think agents need some sort of training. I think they need knowledge about nutrition, about eating disorders, about how to recognize eating disorders, about how to talk to girls about their bodies, and also just like natural body development. It's like HR at any other company. Like you take all the training for diversity, sexual harassment, people leadership, workplace composure. I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. And if you break those rules or go against that training, then whoever you like said it to reports you to HR and then you get reprimanded. Agencies need to work like real companies. There needs to be accountability for the way you speak to people. So, that's basically my story and I am really proud of myself for taking charge of my mental health, my physical health, and my career. I really hope that people in the modeling industry can learn from this and learn how to be more appropriate and supportive when talking to people about their bodies. Like I said, this is just part one and in my next video, I think I'm going to be talking just about like the aftermath of being talked to like this for so long and kind of how I'm recovering and trying to heal my relationship with 
all of that. This was a really heavy video. I hope it makes some sort of difference and I'm sorry if you've also experienced anything like this. It sucks. But yeah, I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. It means a lot to me. Um, and yeah, I love you guys so much. Have a great day and I will see you next time.